subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Shivangi Mishra. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 7th of January. India's COVID-19 cases set for new highs as Omicron variant spreads. Pakistan's opposition PPP announces long march in February over rising inflation. And Taliban announces state of emergency in Afghanistan over snow and rainfall. And now for all the details. India's daily COVID-19 cases jumped to 1,17,100 on Friday. A five-fold increase in a week and on course to overtake its previous infection peak as the fast-spreading Omicron variant replaces Delta in cities. The health ministry reported 302 new deaths, taking the tally to 4,83,178. Total infections stand at 35.23 million. India's daily COVID-19 cases rose to 117,100 on Friday, a five-fold rise in a week and on course to overtake its previous infection peak as the rapidly spreading Omicron variant replaces Delta in cities. The capital New Delhi, where daily cases have risen by more than five times in a week, goes into a 55-hour lockdown from Friday night to Monday morning, prompting migrant workers to rush back home. Authorities have also imposed a night curfew on weekdays, close schools and order most shops to open only on alternate days when there is no curfew. Uh, this is a big concern, big challenge. We have seen that over the last eight days, the figure has gone very high, from 10,000 cases to more than 1 lakh in just 8 days. So with this speed, uh, the number is going to be much higher than in the previous uh, waves. With the virus fastly spreading its wing in mega cities, health experts fear it will soon reach the rural areas where the health infrastructure is already weak. Nearly 70% Indians had been exposed to the coronavirus by the middle of the last year, while an almost equal proportion of adults have been fully vaccinated as of this week. Health officials in Delhi and the state of Maharashtra, home to the city of Mumbai, which together account for the bulk of new cases, have said that hospitals and testing infrastructure have yet to come under pressure as many people are recovering quickly at home. Uh, पांच छह दिनों से नागपुर में भी ये संख्या बढ़ते जा रही है ये संख्या भी देख रहे हैं हम लोग हर दो तीन दिन में डबल होते जा रही है तो ये जो रैपिडली ग्रोइंग इनका जो कोरोना का वायरस का जो बिहेवियर है उसके कारण स्प्रेडिंग बहुत ज्यादा फास्ट हो रहा है इनका संपर्क थोड़ी देर के लिए भी पॉजिटिव पेशेंट से आया है उन्हें भी ये इफेक्ट कर जा रहा है Meanwhile, Puri-based internationally renowned sand artist Sudarshan Patnaya created artwork on Thursday through which he urged people to follow COVID-19 protocol during the tough times. Government officials have privately said that they are working under the assumptions that daily infections will surpass the record of more than 414,000 set in May given what has happened in countries such as United States where daily cases recently rose to past 1 million. Indian security forces gunned down three militants early on Friday in Badgam district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory. Three militants belong to Pakistan-based terror groups Jaish e Mohammed. This is the second gun battle to take place in the rest of region this week. Indian security forces killed three militants belonging to Pakistan-based outfit Jaish e Mohammed on Friday, January 7th morning in Budgam district of India's Jammu and Kashmir territory. One of the local militants was identified as Wasim, who was involved in a number of civilian killings in the valley, while the other two are suspected to be foreign terrorists, according to police. And I encounter in the morning. In morning, three terrorists were killed in the morning, which is a city of Dangapura, Naugaon. 
Security forces have gunned down five more militants earlier this week in the valley in separate encounters belonging to Jaish e Mohammed and Lashkar e Taiba terror outfits. Muslim majority Kashmir has been the site of decades of hostility between nuclear arc rivals India and Pakistan. India accuses the Pakistan army of training and infiltrating militants into Kashmir to stir trouble in the valley. Pakistan denies the charge. Moving on to news from Pakistan. The opposition Pakistan People's Party has announced a long march to Islamabad from February 27th against Prime Minister Imran Khan-led government over spiraling inflation. PPP Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari on Thursday slammed the government and said it is the public's demand to hold elections at the earliest to save the country from Imran Khan's torment. The opposition Pakistan People's Party or PPP Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari on Thursday said his party will begin a long march against Prime Minister Imran Khan's Pakistan Tehrik e Insaf government on February 27. Holding a press conference on Thursday, Belawal slammed the Imran Khan-led government over rising inflation in the country and recently tabled the Finance Supplementary Bill 2021, generally known as mini-budget. He said only Imran Khan has become rich while the rest of the country is getting poorer. Unka mutalba hai ki saaf to shafaf intakhabat jald is jald kiya jai. To Pakistan People's Party apni march jo hai is hukumat ke khilaaf. Karachi se leke Islamabad ta. Inshallah taala 27 February ko mazare kaayad se shuru hoga aur ha. Meanwhile, Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan has admitted that the next three months of his government are crucial as Islamabad is facing severe inflation across the country. Blaming the previous governments of the country, Imran Khan said that the biggest failure of the incumbent government is a lack of accountability of the previous rulers. Inflation in Pakistan has caused an increase in food prices in the country, worsening conditions of lower middle income households. In news from Afghanistan, the Taliban has declared a state of emergency in Afghanistan over heavy snow and rainfall, lashing the majority of the country and also directed provincial officials to prepare for the inclement weather. Afghanistan's 32 out of 34 provinces are witnessing incessant snowfall and rains, which has led to clogged routes. Due to the massive rainfall, floods have also erupted in several areas, reports suggest. The Taliban have announced a state of emergency in Afghanistan as heavy snow and rainfall continues to batter the country, reported local media. Provincial authorities have been directed by the State Ministry for Disaster Management for further preparedness for rain and snowfall, reported the Khamma Press. Mohammad Amin Mubariz, a ministry official, said relief material to affected areas has been sent to SS people during the snow and rainfall and their distribution is underway. Afghanistan's 32 out of 34 provinces are witnessing repeated snow and rainfall that have clogged routes. Reports suggested that at least 11 people have been killed and 23 wounded across Afghanistan amid the heavy snow and rainfall this week. This comes as the United Nations estimates nearly 23 million Afghans, about 55% of the population are facing extreme level of hunger, with nearly 9 million at risk of famine as winter takes hold. Life for Afghanistan's poor has always been hard and it is getting worse under the Taliban rule and the abrupt withdrawal of foreign aid with prices for food, fuel and other basic staples rising rapidly out of reach for many. Sri Lanka on Thursday signed a deal with the local unit of Indian Oil Corporation to lease 75 oil tanks. As the island nation moves closer to securing $500 million fuel credit line from India. This comes as Sri Lanka is facing its worst financial crisis in decades, prompting it to look at innovative ways to bring in foreign exchange. Sri Lanka on Thursday signed a deal with the local unit of Indian Oil Corporation Lanka IOC to lease 75 oil tanks as the island moved closer to securing a $500 million fuel credit line from India. 
85 of 99 tanks will be under Sri Lankan control, which were under Indian control, Sri Lanka's energy minister confirmed. Sri Lanka is facing its worst financial crisis in decades, with its foreign exchange reserves dwindling and nearly $4.5 billion worth of debt repayments due in 2022, prompting it to look at innovative ways to bring in foreign exchange. The signing of the deal comes ahead of Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi's visit to Colombo this weekend, with China also vying for clout in Sri Lanka. Previously, Sri Lanka had agreed to lease all of its 99 tank oil farms to India in 2003. According to the new pact, Lanka IOC will have 14 tanks on a 50-year lease while its joint venture with state-run CPC or Ceylon Petroleum Corporation and the Trinco Petroleum Terminal will develop 61 oil farms. CPC will use the remaining 24 tanks. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi during a visit to Sri Lanka in 2019 said the project could help the island become a regional petroleum hub. Successive Indian and Sri Lankan governments have been attempting since 1987 to divide up ownership and development of the World War II era tank farm at Trikomali, a strategically important harbour off the island's scenic east coast. Nepal's Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Dioba has cancelled his visit to India amid a surge in COVID-19 cases in the neighbouring country. Reports suggest Dioba was scheduled to attend a vibrant Gujarat summit in Western India. India's Gujarat state government, however, postponed the Global Investor Summit on Thursday due to the rapid spread of the Omicron variant across India. A meeting of the Nepal's cabinet held on Wednesday had given a nod for the visit and Dioba was all set to participate along with 25-member delegation on Sunday. Besides attending the summit, Dioba was also scheduled to meet his Indian counterpart Narendra Modi and as many as eight different agreements in various sectors were expected to be signed during the four-day visit. Meanwhile, the foreign ministers of both the countries on Thursday held a telephonic conversation and agreed to continue on discussion on areas of bilateral cooperation. A group of five university students and their mentor in India's Jammu and Kashmir have invented a cooker for cooking starch-free rice, aimed at helping diabetes patients. The cooker consistently screens and starch the status and filters it out. A group of five Kashmiri students along with a scientific officer from the Kashmir University in India's Jammu and Kashmir have invented a cooker for cooking starch-free rice aimed at helping diabetes patients. The device cooks on a single text message remotely for multiple persons and can monitor the starch status of rice being cooked. The cooker consistently screens the starch status and evacuates it when it is being discharged out of the rice during the cooking process. इस राइस कुकर में हमने बहुत सारे फीचर्स ऐड किए हैं अगर हम बात करेंगे पहली चीज जो स्टार्च है जो अभी करंट एग्जिस्टिंग राइस कुकर्स हमारे पास हैं उनमें जो स्टार्च लेवल होता है वो प्रिजर्व रहता है जिसकी वजह से जो डायबिटिक पेशेंट होता है उसको डॉक्टर एडवाइस करता है कि आप जो राइस कुकर का खाना है ना खाएं तो वो चीज हमने एक वो हमारे लिए एक मोटिवेट बन गई स्टूडेंट्स ने काफी मेहनत की है डिस्पाइट ऑफ द कोविड एक्चुअली इनका ये फाइनल प्रोजेक्ट था तो इनकी कोशिश थी कि हम कुछ ऐसे क्योंकि हर एक स्टूडेंट हमारा बनाता है प्रोजेक्ट बट इनकी कोशिश थी कि कुछ हम ऐसा कुछ करें जिसे सोसाइटी को बेनिफिश बेनिफिट कुछ हो मींस ऑल दिस ह्यूमैनिटी को किसी को भी पर्टिकुलरली डायबिटीज पेशेंट्स के लिए इन्होंने ये पहले सोचा था तो यही मोटिवेशन थी इनको डिस्पाइट ऑफ द कोविड जो भी हालात थे उनके उनको मद्देनजर रख के उन्होंने काफी अच्छा काम कर लिया the creators said it took them two years to complete the project and had to face several challenges amid the pandemic. Their motivation was to make something that would be beneficial for society. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and also follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.